Hey everyone, it's Tyler, the Antenna Man. A few years ago, 175 TV stations sold out their over-the-air viewers in the FCC incentive auction. Billions of dollars exchanged hands between cell phone companies, the FCC, and TV stations themselves. Which local TV stations took payouts to put their signal off the air or move it to a less reliable VHF channel? Let me go rephrase that question in a less technical term. Which TV stations sold out their antenna viewers? Before I dig into which specific TV stations sold out their antenna viewers, I first need to explain the FCC incentive auction and repack. Sometime in the early 2010s, the FCC announced a plan to sell additional TV spectrum to cell phone companies despite the fact they had just sold UHF channels 52 through 69 a few years prior with a digital transition of 2009. The whole thing was hidden in a law ironically called the Middle Class Tax Relief and Job Creation Act of 2012. I'm not sure how selling TV spectrum to cell phone companies helps the middle class. Anyway, in 2016, the FCC held an auction where cell phone companies bid for TV spectrum and TV stations were offered payouts to either move to high VHF, low VHF, or put their signal off the air entirely. At the end of the auction, the FCC generated $19.8 billion in revenue from cell phone companies, paid TV stations over $10 billion for their spectrum, and deposited over $7 billion to U.S. Treasury to uh, pay down the national debt, which I honestly was not aware of until I researched information for this video. In a previous video, I called out PBS as one of the largest organizations that sold out their over-the-air viewers, but I didn't give enough credit to other companies that did the same thing. Well, now it's time for their moment of shame. 175 TV stations took payouts from the FCC in exchange for their TV spectrum. Obviously, I can't go through them all, but what I can do is narrow it down to a few stations based on the company, the payout amount, and a few other factors. If you would like to see if a local TV station in your area sold out their antenna viewers, I include a link to this chart in the description of the video. Most areas were affected. I should mention that most TV stations that took payouts in the FCC incentive auction did keep their channel on the air in the market, usually by channel sharing with another TV station. Some even took the opportunity to improve their over-the-air coverage. However, in general, TV reception for antenna viewers was negatively impacted in most areas during and even years after the FCC repack, which I covered in previous videos of mine. Here are the TV stations that receive the highest payout amounts. WWTO, a TBN-owned TV station in Chicago, took over $304 million to go off the air. The station ended up moving to a low-powered station in the market, so a lot of viewers lost their signal. By the way, TBN is a nonprofit organization that asks for donations. Yeah, don't donate to them. The next highest payout went to WNBC in New York City. The station received over $214 million to put their signal off the air. Thankfully, this did not impact reception in the market as station owner Comcast moved WNBC's programming to the broadcast signal of sister station WNJU, the Telemundo affiliate. The picture quality was impacted a little bit from this move with two 1080i networks on one RF channel. The third highest payout went to WRNN in Newburgh, New York. The station received over $211 million to go off the air. Reception was impacted for viewers in the area as the TV station moved to a channel share in New York City, over 50 miles away. The next category I'm going to dig into is the TV stations that sold their spectrum and moved to the high VHF band. This definitely impacted TV reception on the involved TV stations in the area because VHF channels tend to be harder to pick up than UHF channels, especially with indoor antennas. The largest payout went to the TV station KRON in San Francisco. The station took over $77 million to move from UHF channel 38 to high VHF channel 7. The second largest payout went to KDOC in Los Angeles. 
Alice Communications took over $66 million to move the TV station from UHF Channel 32 to high VHF Channel 12. The third largest payout went to WGBY, the PBS station in Springfield, Massachusetts. It received over $57 million to move from UHF Channel 22 to high VHF Channel 13. Now, I'm going to dig into the TV stations that sold their TV spectrum and move to the trash low VHF band. This move definitely impact antenna viewers as most TV antennas are not low VHF capable. The largest payout went to WGBH, the PBS station in Boston. It received over $161 million to move to low VHF. Several antenna viewers, I'm sure in the thousands, lost a channel as a result. I should mention that WGBH did launch a simulcast in standard definition on a stronger UHF channel to minimize reception issues with the move to low VHF. The second largest payout went to KVCR in Los Angeles, another PBS station, in the amount of $157 million. The third largest payout went to another TV station in Los Angeles, in the amount of $123 million. The next three payouts were all taken by PBS stations. In fact, about half of all the TV stations that moved to the trash low VHF band were PBS stations. This is why I called them out in a separate video, which you can find linked in the description of the video. Next, I'm going to dig into the companies that took the largest number of bribes, I mean payouts, from the FCC, impacting the most areas. While the company that impacted the largest number of TV stations is listed as Nexstar Media Group on this chart, I'm told that the company Media General actually took these payouts from the FCC incentive auction, not Nexstar. Nexstar was likely listed because the company acquired Media General shortly after the incentive auction took place and probably around the time this document was generated. Anyway, Media General sold the TV spectrum of eight TV stations totaling over $450 million in bribes, I mean payouts. Why do I keep saying bribes? While I can't say for sure how exactly reception was impacted on every TV station that Media General took payouts for, Viewers of WKBN, the CBS affiliate in Youngstown, Ohio, were definitely negatively impacted. Right after Media General took $34 million from the FCC, the new owner of WKBN, Nexstar, had to shut down the broadcast signal and move CBS programming to sister station WYTV, which had a weaker signal than WKBN, as shown on this old TV full map. As a result, a lot of antenna viewers in the area lost CBS as shown in these various Facebook comments. Let's go through some of them. Ever since you changed frequencies, my signal has been garbage. This is absurd. I live in a rural area and have an outdoor antenna because I'm unable to get cable. I'm no longer receiving channel 27 with my converter box. Ridiculous that antenna users can no longer get this channel. I see by the post that I am not the only one who can no longer get channel 27. WKBN, where is your channel? These types of comments go on and on. I actually have dozens of screenshots of them. I should mention that Nexstar did eventually improve the WYTV signal that carried WKBN, but for a while there was very little explanation about what actually happened besides just run a channel scan. That doesn't help if the station moved to a weaker signal after taking $34 million from the FCC. The company OTA Broadcasting LLC impacted the second largest number of TV stations. Nine TV stations across the country were put off the air in exchange for $440 million in cash from the FCC. Most of the TV stations owned by OTA Broadcasting went off the air entirely and did not return to another channel in the market. This company was actually set up by Michael Dell, the owner of Dell Computers, specifically to buy smaller TV stations just to sell them in the FCC incentive auction for a profit. In this case, public airwaves were literally exploited so that Michael Dell could add to his $75 billion wealth. Be sure to check out my other video on this topic as I provide more information on what actually happened. The next company I want to mention is the Trinity Broadcasting Network. It took payouts totaling $636 million to put seven of their TV stations off the air. 
While this sort of demonstrates some secret cash flow that may go into a nonprofit organization that asks for donations, it wasn't much of a loss for antenna viewers because, well, who watches TBN? What I covered in this video is only the tip of the iceberg in terms of TV stations that sold out their antenna viewers in the FCC repack. As I said in the beginning of this video, the FCC auction generated $19.8 billion in revenue from cell phone companies, paid TV stations over $10 billion for their spectrum, and deposited over $7 billion to U.S. Treasury to pay down the national debt. I knew that cell phone companies funded the payouts to the TV stations, but until the other day, I was not aware that $7 billion was basically pocketed by the government while antenna viewers were negatively impacted. While the FCC set up an ad campaign, website, and fully staffed call center to help viewers with reception problems from the repack, I wish that more information was provided to antenna viewers. Something like a quick explanation about how some TV stations in the area may temporarily have a reduced signal, the antenna might need to be adjusted, or even upgraded in the case of the low VHF channel moves. Be sure to run a rescan wasn't enough for some people. I feel like my YouTube channel did more for antenna viewers at the time providing constant updates on the FCC repack, when each phase took place, and what to do if a channel was lost besides just saying, oh, hey, run a rescan. Hey, FCC, can I get some of that $7 billion? I've said in many videos of mine that the FCC repack created a huge mess for TV broadcasters across the country, including those who did not take payouts from the FCC. Nearly 1,000 TV stations had to move to lower frequencies. There weren't enough tower crews to get the work done in every market with all the demand that spiked, and at one point, roughly 25% of TV stations were stuck operating at a reduced power while tower work took place. I can go on and on about how outrageous this whole thing was. At the end of the day, the companies involved now have their moment of shame on my YouTube channel. Without being too gloom and doom, there were a few benefits of the FCC repack. T-Mobile was able to launch 5G home internet with the additional spectrum that they purchased. Millions of people now have a great alternative to traditional internet services, especially in rural areas where slow DSL and satellite internet may have been the only options. Some TV stations also took the opportunity to improve their over-the-air signal since they needed a new antenna and transmitter equipment to move to lower frequencies. Still, antenna viewers in a lot of areas were negatively impacted, and I feel like the whole thing could have been done better. If your reception was negatively impacted during and even after the FCC repack, please leave a comment with the details below. This way, I can bring up the mess it caused next time Congress and the FCC try to sell even more TV spectrum to cell phone companies, which they probably will sometime in the future. Thanks so much for watching this YouTube video, but before you exit out, be sure to follow my links to some other videos in the description that I mentioned, including how Michael Dell profited off the FCC repack and the PBS stations that sold out their antenna viewers while continuing to ask for donations. And additional thanks to everyone who supports me on Patreon or as a member of my YouTube channel. If my videos helped you cut the cord or learn about the corruption of your government and you'd like to help support them while gaining exclusive perks, such as behind-the-scenes content, access to my videos ad-free one day early, and direct contact with me, visit patreon.com forward slash antenna man or click the join button in this video and you can also click the thanks button. If you're on Facebook, you can like my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash antenna man PA. If you're not on Facebook and would like to receive email updates whenever I post new videos, feel free to sign up to my email list. I include a link to it in the description of the video. Stay tuned to my YouTube channel for more cord cutting and antenna related videos and have an awesome day.